one example of the great differences that my my son my youngest he uh, when i moved to the village he was only one year hardly one year old and he didn't talk yet and he began talking in the village and i was worried when he became uh, two years and he doesn't talk two years and a half he doesn't talk i addressed his uh, a babysitter there and she said no 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 you're so wrong he talks he says ode and he says auto and he says um, another three words in he she in said hebrew? in hebrew and i said what <laughs> he says these things but i thought he's just uh, mumbling something uh, something that i don't understand and i rushed to the head teacher and i said my first my son's first words are in hebrew i insist to have an arabic teacher now <laughs> and uh, that was Diana and she brought an Arabic one and uh, I was aware so he began talking also and um, uh, he was the only Arab child his age in the nursery all the rest were Jews so I understand that so when he was uh, more uh, growing up and uh, talking uh, using both languages fluently swimming between both of them he didn't know that this is Arabic, this is Hebrew. He couldn't even say the word Arabic. He couldn't say that he's an Arab, they are a Jew. Uh, he, kn he knew them by the name, and that was fascinated for me. So this is something that we, we are uh, going to work on this year. We're going to focus on that and find a way how to make the, Arab, the Arabic uh, language more present at the school. Because unfortunately, what what happened is that uh, teachers like Raida or all the Arab teachers are really bilingual, and us, uh, the Jewish teachers, are not. For the same reasons, we never uh, had to study uh, Arabic. So when the teacher goes into the classroom, uh, let's say Raida, when she teach uh, English, well, hopefully she speak mostly English in, in class, but even uh, at the yard or outside, she can use both languages, or th three of them. But uh, I speak only Hebrew, or mostly Hebrew, so kids actually get sort of 150% Hebrew and only 50% Arab. If it's an uh, uh, Arab, Arabic lesson <coughs> and we have two teachers, they're, they're both Arabic, uh, Arab teachers. And if it's a Hebrew lesson, uh, both teachers will be Jewish teachers, that, Arab, that Hebrew is their mother tongue. It's because we don't translate, we don't put two teachers in a classroom to translate each, ad, each other. It's uh, in order to be able to give uh, more specific aid to kids to work with uh, different groups. Ah, oh, okay. I see. So and two when Jewish we, teachers yeah. teaching Hebrew. Yes, and when they and they speak out. Hebrew within themselves, it's sort of a model for the kids. They can hear uh, Hebrew or Arabic uh, from the teachers when they speak together. It's more like it's um, to encourage the exposure to the language and uh, the reality of it, to, to see that it's real. It's not that we are learning it from the book, but people are using it, so it's talked yeah, amongst talking. them, between them, uh, to encourage them also to, to hear it and to try to speak it.